Brought to you by GatewayCitySavers.com. Softly Scouting Report, hosted by Cliff Saunders, exclusively on 101ESPN.com. Hello and welcome on in to the Softly Scouting Report right here on 101ESPN.com alongside 101ESPN NFL analyst Tony Softly. I'm Cliff Saunders. The Rams are back for their bye week. It's a 3:05 start in the city by the bay. San Francisco 49ers at 2-6, Rams at 4-4. Four and four. Quarterback issues in San Francisco. Which Smith is going to be at quarterback on Sunday? Troy or Alex? Well, you know, it's going to be the hottest Smith or maybe the healthiest Smith, and it looks like Troy Smith is going to get the nod. Alex Smith is still reeling in a little bit from that shoulder, the left shoulder injury. So, you know, Troy's going to get the nod, and, and you know, he brings a little bit different uh, athleticism to the table, so it'll be interesting to see what he does. All right, so which quarterback then should be out there if everything was equal? Well, if everything's equal, you know, right now, Troy, you know, he's got him on the one game winning streak, you know, which is kind of crazy to say. But, you know, what? Uh, there are two different guys. You know, Troy is a little bit more athletic, more mobile. He runs a little bit better where Alex sits in the pocket, you know, and, and throws the ball. He's a lot bigger quarterback, 6'4", about 225. So he's bigger in stature and, and, you know, he slings the ball a little bit different. He throws a better ball downfield where Troy throws a little bit better ball underneath. Alex Smith was fabulous in college at the University of Utah, has not been able to repeat that kind of success on the NFL level. What's happened to him? Well, he's come from the spread offense, you know, to the NFL. You know, you're talking about a rookie reading coverages and going through that. But throwing all that aside, when Norv Turner was there with Alex Smith, he played exceptionally well. You know, no problems learning the offense, the anticipation, uh, his time and anticipation was very good. Now all of a sudden he's kind of falling apart and that might have to do with the four, you know, uh, offensive coordinators that he's had and several head coaches. So, you know, there's too much coaching change, not enough stability in that, in that head office and in that uh, front office as far as coaching. And I think it's affected his play. We all remember Troy Smith from Ohio State. He won the Heisman Trophy. In fact, before Joe Flacco got the starting job, they were looking at Troy Smith as the possible starter a couple of years ago in Baltimore. Do you look at Troy Smith and see a player that could be a long-term solution for the 49ers quarterback problems. No, no, I don't, Cliff. I, I think what he is, I think he is a journeyman. He's a, he's a solid backup. He can get you out of some games. He can win some games for you. But I don't see him to come in and lead a team to a Super Bowl, lead a team to the playoffs. And I could be wrong. But, you know, the past tells me that that's what he is, and that's, you know, I think that's who they have at San Francisco. Whoever the quarterback is for the 49ers, he's got some weapons to play with. Frank Gore, Michael Crabtree, and Vernon Davis. Which of those three guys, and they're all dynamic players, which of those three scares you as a personnel guy more? Well, you know what, I like all of them. I think Michael Crabtree brings, the, he can spread the field. You know, he's got good playmaking ability on the edge. He's got nice hands. What he does after the catch is very special. Uh, Frank Gore, to me, is the all-purpose back. He, you know, next to Steven Jackson in this division, he is the best. Uh, very good vision, inside run skills. He can catch the ball on the edge and make some things happen as well. And, you know, it, Vernon Davis is a freak. He's just a freak of nature. He's a tight end that, that runs like a receiver. He can stretch the secondary. He can make the big plays. He's not much of a blocker, so I put a TEA tag on him, an athletic tight end tag on him. But you know what? He's somebody that you have to watch. But Josh Morgan, the kid out of Virginia Tech a couple years ago, he's a guy to keep an eye on. The 49ers in the draft last April decided they were going to remake their offensive line somewhat. They took two linemen in the first round. How are they working out? Uh, Mike Ayupati from Idaho, exceptional, 330 pounds, you know, and then you got Anthony Davis playing the uh, the tackle and Ayupati at the guard. I thought those were excellent choices. You very seldom see a team take two big offensive linemen in the first round or in any round, to be, to be uh, honest with you. But they did it. They took a chance on it, and it really wasn't a chance. These are two solid football players who are going to be there for a long time. You know, they have a defensive-minded head coach in Mike Singletary. We all remember how great a player he was. We all remember what he meant to that old 46 defense in Chicago on the 85 Bears. But defensively, this 49er team, and even though they have – Patrick Willis and Nate Clements and Justin Smith has struggled. Why? Well, you know, this is a solid defense. I personally, the Rams have the best statistical defense in the NFC West. But I think if you look at players and you look at this roster and some of the players you mentioned, this is a very solid defense. And I think the inconsistency of the offense, the turnovers, and the inability to sustain drives and put points on the board has put this defense back on their heels, and they haven't responded like they really should have. Look for this defense to respond this Sunday, and it's going to be an interesting contest out there at the Bay. I mentioned Mike Singletary a minute ago, now into his third season uh, as the head coach with this 49er ball club. 
What do you think of him as a head coach? You know what, I think Mike brings, you know, a lot of uh, intangibles. He brings the intensity, the fire, the desire, and you got to have passion to play for this guy. I think the problem with Mike Singletary, and it's really not a problem, it's unfortunate, he's doing the on-the-job training. I mean, you know, he's learning how to be a head coach on the job. And I think what he's done is he's tried to surround himself with some experts that he's not, an area that he's not, and uh, it just hasn't really worked out. And finally, we always talk matchups. What's the most important one that you'll be watching for on Sunday? Oh, for no doubt, no doubt. I'm looking at Sam Bradford against that defense. I want to see how they go about taking advantage of that uh, middle of the field and, and the edges. Is To me, the secondary is the weak point of this defense. The front seven are awesome. I mean, they fly around. They bring a lot of energy, a lot of aggressiveness, a lot of toughness, and they're going to apply pressure on Sam Bradford. It's how he responds to that pressure defense. It's the 4-4 four four Rams taking on the 2-6 and six San Francisco 49ers at Candlestick Park on Sunday. Tony will join Randy Carricker and Rick Venturi for the pregame on 101 ESPN at noon. The kickoff is at 3 o'clock with Steve Savart and DeMarco Farr. Tony will hop on the postgame show with myself and Jim Hannafin when the final gun sounds. For Tony Softly, I'm Cliff Saunders. This has been the Softly Scouting Report on 101 ESPN.com.